Okay, this is uh, measures of position and outliers. First thing we'll talk about is a z-score, um, sometimes called a standard score. This is the number of standard deviations at a given value is above or below the mean. And uh, I put in a round z to two decimal places. And it's given by the formulas. Uh, it's the same formula whether you're talking about sample or population. But z is equal to your x, your data value, minus x bar, your mean or mu, your mean, uh, divided by your standard deviation. Uh, whether it's sample standard deviation or whether it's uh, sigma population standard deviation. This allows you to compare. Uh, for example, you want to compare somebody in one class to somebody else in another class. Well, um, they're, they're two different individuals, maybe getting the material in a little bit, little bit different uh, manner. Maybe in one class, um, they even have a different instructor. Um, so how do you compare this person against this person? You know, you give the give the award to this person because they've done better. Well, um, it's like comparing apples and oranges sometimes. Uh, for example, the the ACT test. People um, go and take the ACT test, um, but how do you compare one person against another person? They get uh, what one person maybe gets a little bit higher score than the other one, but they don't take the exact same test. They're different tests. So if they're different tests, again, how do you compare it? Um, now, if they were the same test, if they gave everybody exactly the same test, what you'd find is that you'd have study guides. Uh, people could study where they would ace the ACT. So you have to give different tests. And again, you you have to try to find some kind of measure to compare them. What you do is you compare them to those around them. So like, uh, for example, uh, in one ACT testing, a uh, person gets a certain score. Well, you compare them against everybody else who went and took the test with them. And then somebody else goes in a different time, you again compare them against everybody else who went in around them. Um, now that isn't a perfect uh, system, but it's the best you can do when you're when you're comparing items that aren't exactly alike. Ordinary values are between and including negative 2 and 2, and unusual values are less than negative 2 and greater than 2. So if you got any problems asking if this is ordinary, if this is unusual, uh, that's what they're asking is find a z-score and then see where does it fall. Now let's take a look at a problem. Okay, in the 8 o'clock college algebra class in the first test, the mean was 75 with a standard deviation of 3. So here's the 8 o'clock college algebra. And the mean was 75. and uh, standard deviation was 3 Bill was in his class and he got an 82 so Bill that's our X value was equal to um, 82 okay compare that against in 10 o'clock college algebra class their mean was 83 with a standard deviation of um, 2. And Sally was in this class and got 83. So Sally got 83. And that's her X value. Okay. Did Sally or Bill do better relative to their classes? Obviously, Sally got a higher score, but uh, the 10 o'clock class didn't necessarily take the exact same test as the 8 o'clock class. Maybe they took different tests. Maybe this one was harder. Sometimes just by word, wording the problem a certain way, it becomes harder. Um, sometimes on college, in, uh, an algebra test, not college algebra, but I'll ask students to factor this. They don't usually have any problem. But if I flip it around and ask them to factor 1 minus x squared, a certain percentage will miss this problem. It just throws them, throws them off to have it flipped around like that. Um, so again, sometimes even when the tests are very similar, it's just the wording, the, the arrangement will throw, throw students off. Well, to, figure, to compare the two, we're going to go up and use our z-score. Well... Here and these were uh, the I'd consider like the, the eight o'clock class is my population, and then we have ten o'clock classes our population, but it really doesn't matter. It's the same formula. 
So we'll do our x minus our mean over our standard deviation. Well, x was 82 minus our mean, which is 75, over 3. And I'll do the same thing with this one. This will be x minus the mean over sigma. Well, x in this case was 83, and the mean was uh, 83. Oh, that's interesting. Divide by standard deviation, which is 2. I can do this one in my head. 83 minus 83 is 0. 0 divided by anything is 0. This one over here. If I plug that in my calculator, um, first thing I'll do is I'll go to 82 minus 75. That gives us 7. And then uh, 7 divided by 3 gives us 2.33. And uh, Bill's uh, z-score is larger, so Bill did better, even though his score is lower uh, relative to those around him. Now you can probably see some flaws with this um, this concept. You know, um, maybe Bill uh, was in the class uh, full of um, individuals not not uh, quite uh, where they need to be in algebra. Uh, not very smart individuals. <laughs> He's surrounded by a bunch of um, math literates. He looks like a genius in comparison. While Sally, she's surrounded by uh, 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 engineering students. You know, and even though she does well um, in comparison, she does does lower. So again, there are some flaws with uh, using the Z scores as standard standard scores. Okay, the uh, kth percentile. This is uh, the kth percentile of a set of data is a value such that k percent of the observations are less than or equal to the value. Um, if I say you're in the 80th percentile uh, in terms of your scores, that means your scores are better than 80% of the people that took that test. Uh, so that's what the percentile uh, means. Now we uh, can, can divide things into percentiles, which we just talked about. That divides the data into 100 equal parts. We can also do quartiles. This divides the data into 4 equal parts. Or deciles. It divides the data into 10 equal parts. Now I notice for quartiles it goes from Q1 to Q3. And for deciles it goes from D1 to D9. Now percentiles here I have P1 through P99. Um, to say you're in the 100th percentile means you're better than 100% uh, of the data. Which doesn't make sense for a lot of people. So. Um, and I, I find it interesting in the newest version of Excel, they actually have a function to take into account whether you consider a hundredth percentile is, is valid or not. Because there's different, um, different opinions on that. Now here's a picture of how, why you only need three quartiles. If I had three quartiles, you see it splits the data into four separate pieces. Each one being 25%. And... Um, then you see how the smallest data value and largest data value and the median kind of corresponds with that. We're going to find the median is the same as the second quartile. Now finding quartiles by hand. Um, we'll come back to this. Let me write these numbers down first. Okay, so we got... And actually, I mean, uh, they're already in order, so that's good. Made, made life easy on myself. 33, 201, 305, 317, 320, and 330. <clears throat> 1, 2, 3, 4, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 16. 16, 4, 8, 16. Yeah, 
Okay, so let's go back up here. We're going to find the quartiles by hand. Now, first step, I've made my life a little bit easier. I arranged the data in ascending order uh, from smallest to largest. Um, so, we've done that. Step two, determine the median, M, or second quartile. Well, um, if I got 16 total, then uh, it's even. And um, when you got even, you got to group the middle two numbers together. Um, so if I take the, let's see, 3, 6, 7, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then there should be 7 on this side. Let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. To find our median, we're going to find the average of these. So we'll take 83. Uh, plus 91 divided by 2. That gives me um, 174 over 2. Let me use my calculator so I don't make a math error and have to redo the entire video. 87. Okay, so our Q2 or median is 87. Okay, that's step two. Step three, divide the data set into halves. The observations below M and the observations above M. Okay, so let's do that first. Well, the one's, one's below 87. That would be 33 through 83. This was, uh, what step was this? This was step two. Okay, so step three. I'm going to have... Uh, 33, 37, 43, 51, 62, 65, 72, and 83. 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay. And then um, into two halves, observations below and observations above. So observations above will be um, 91. 105, 110, 201, 305, 317, 320, and 330. It then says the first quartile is a median of the bottom half, and the third quartile is a median of the top half. So I want to find the median of these. Well, these are both 8. So again, I'm going to take the middle two numbers and find the average of them. So here I got 51 plus 62 divided by 2. 51 plus 62 gives me 113 divided by 2 gives me 56.5 and that's my uh, top half so that would be Q1 so 56 .5. Q3 we're going to find the median of uh, the bottom set of numbers. Again, since there's an even number of them, I have to take the the average in the middle two. So I'll take 201 plus 305 divided by 2. 201 plus 305 divided by 2 gives us 253. So Q3 is 253. And those would be our quartiles um, by hand. Not a very pretty, pretty process. Let's look at doing it on the calculator. We're going to like this much, much better. Let's go first enter our numbers in. Because that's our first step. Input numbers in second mode to exit out. So let's look at this example. And... Um, Measures the position and outliers. Yes, measures of position and outliers. Page zero one dot PDF. Okay, 
So we got these. And we want to, um, instructions are to find the quartiles. So again, let's first, first go enter these in. So I'm going to press my stat button. I'll do enter on edit. And I'll delete a few times to get rid of the numbers that are there. And then we got 2, 8, so 2 enter, 8 enter, 33 enter, 45 enter, 71 enter, 83 enter, 91 enter, 105 enter, 113 enter, 235, 235 enter, 471, 471 enter, 512 enter, 513 enter, 555 enter, and 1002 enter. So we just input our numbers in, second mode, exit out. So do second mode, exit out. And it says do a stat button, right arrow to calc, enter on one of our stats, and then enter. So press stat, right arrow to calc. We got one of our stats uh, highlighted, so I do enter on that, and I do enter again. Now then I have a note here, it says down arrow to see the quartiles. If I down arrow to the very bottom, you're going to see Q1, median, and Q3. Well, that's Q1, Q2, and Q3. So our answers in this problem would be 45. This is assuming I typed all the numbers in correctly, which is sometimes kind of iffy. Uh, this would be 105, and the other one would be 512. Very easy using technology. Okay. Just looked at that. Now, let's say you want to find a percentile of a number in a list. And the list is sorted from smallest to largest. Um, first thing you do is you find a number of values less than x, and x is a number in our list. Divide by the total number of values times 100. So let's look at this. It says uh, we're given these numbers, and they're ranged from smallest to largest. It says find a percentile of 33. Well, if we um, go up, uh, find a percent of our number on the list. It says the number of values less than x. Well, 33. 33 is right here. The number of values less than it is 5. So this would be 5 over, and our formula says over the total number of values. A total, there's uh, 5, 10, 15 total. And then you multiply it times 100. So let me see what I get here. Should be 33%. But, uh, 5 divided by 15 times 100. 33. 33rd, 32nd, or thir no, 33rd. Okay. Well, that's just bizarre. 33 actually gives you a 33rd percentile. Um, what are the odds? <laughs> but that's fine. A percentile of a number in a list. Um, it means that this this value here, the 33, is um, greater than 33% um, percent of the data, basically. And that maybe looks about a third of the way, doesn't it? Now, usually you round like normal on that. Now, this is how to find the nth percentile. Uh, it says sort the data. We're going to compute the locator value using i is equal to k over 100 times n plus 1. k is the percentile in question, n is the number of values. And i is the position of your answer in the list. If i has no decimals, your percentile is um, just the ith value. If it has decimals, you find the average of the two numbers it falls between. And we'll see what those mean. Let's take a look at this problem. Okay. 
Okay. 17, 21, 25, 31, 43, 55, 71, 83, 91, 105, 210, 233, 301, 315, and 320. And we want to find the 25th percentile. So let's go to our steps. Okay, sort the data. Well, it's already sorted from the smallest to the largest, so we're fine there. Step two, compute the locator value. So I is equal to, and our formula says K over 100 times N plus 1. Well, the K is the one we're trying to find, the 25th, so it would be 25 over 100 times N plus 1. Well, N, there's a um, total of 5, 10, 15. So we've got 15 plus 1. That should give us 4, but let me double check it. 25 divided by 100 times 16. 4. So i is equal to 4. Now, uh, this is the position of your answer in the list. So if it has, if i has no decimals, this one doesn't have any decimals, then your answer, the percentile, is the ith value. So it's the fourth value. So this is the fourth value. So our answer in this problem, the 25th percentile, is going to equal to 31. Let's look at another one of those. Okay, so we've got 17, 21, 25, 31, 43, 55, 71, 83, 91, 105, 210, 233, 301, 315 and 320. Now we're find uh, 17th percentile. Okay, let's look at our steps. Step one, sort data. That's sorted. Uh, step two, find our locator value. I is equal to K over 100 times N plus 1. Well, K is 17, so we got 17 over 100 times n plus 1. There's 15 numbers, so I got 15 plus 1. And that gives us, let's see, 0.17 times 16, 2.72. Now this is the position of the answer in the list. But here we have decimals, and it says the average of two numbers that falls between, position-wise. Well, this is our 2.772 second position in our list. We don't have a 2.7, 7200 uh, second position. Uh, we do have a second position. Here's our second position. And we also have a third position. Well, if we think where 2.72 falls, it falls in between these somewhere. So a 2.72 position falls somewhere in there. And that's what this says. If um, if it has decimals, you find the average of the two numbers it falls between. Well, it falls between 21 and 25. So we're going to find the average of 21 plus 25. And that gives us 46 over 2, or gives us 23. So P sub 17 is equal to 23. 17th percentile is 23. Um, quartiles and percentiles. 
Another way of finding the quartiles versus what we showed is if you're doing it by hand, they're very tedious to split them up into separate separate items like that. Uh, I think this way is a little easier. Um, maybe a little bit rounding differences on it, but you know it's not a huge deal. Um, if you find the first quartile, just find a 25th percentile. If you find the second quartile, just find a 50th percentile. And if you find the third quartile, just find a 75th percentile. Again, that works out nice because you know these steps are a little bit easier than trying to split 200 numbers into half and then splitting those halves in halves. Especially, um, well, calculator's easy. What am I saying? <laughs> Let's look at some other formulas. We got the interquartile range, IQR, and this is just Q3 minus Q1, and it's a measure of how spread out is your data. Uh, specifically, when your data is skewed, it just gives you a little bit better measure than the um, standard deviation. semi interquartile range is Q3 minus Q1 divided by 2. Mid-quartile, Q3 plus Q1, all of it divided by 2. And then the 1090 percentile range is P sub 90 minus P sub 10. 90th percentile minus the 10th percentile. Okay, a summary. When do you use what? Uh, shape of the distribution is symmetric. It's bell-shaped. Use the mean for the central tendency, and for your dispersion, use standard deviation. If the data is skewed left or skewed right, use the median for the central tendency, and use the interquartile range for your how spread out data is dispersion. Okay, we got um, something called outliers. These are extreme observations, and a lot of times you'll you want to exclude your outliers because they'll mess up your data. Now, sometimes you may want to include them just because you it's vital you include all data uh, you can't just throw some out but usually you want to uh, throw those out sometimes there are data entry error sometimes there are people lying to you um, so now checking for outliers by using quartiles you determine Q1 and Q3 you find your IQR Q3 minus Q1 then you determine offenses the fences serve as cutoff points for determining outliers Lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times IQR, and upper fence is Q3 plus 1.5 times IQR. And then if your outliers are less than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence, um, or if, if you got values that are less than the lower fence or greater than the upper fence, those are considered outliers. Okay, let's take a look at problem number seven. This has a lot of different things we're going to be looking for. I shouldn't say a lot, but it'll be four different things. Let me start a new page. It says, given data below, find the following compute the z-score corresponding to 5.3. Well, remember the z-score, our formula is x minus our mean, and I'll, I'll say population just because it really doesn't matter, divided by our standard deviation. I just don't want to write out population or mean and write out standard deviation. I just want to use symbols. Well, we have to find the mean and standard deviation of this first. Um, now, it would matter on the homework uh, whether it's population or sample. Um, because remember, when you find the standard deviation, uh, the standard deviation of the population is slightly different. Um, and taking that into account, let me change this. Given data below, um, given the population data below, find the following. There we go. Well, first thing we're going to do is find the mean standard deviation by, by the calculator. So I go in my um, my edit. So I go stat and edit. I'm going to press my up arrow and I'll press clear and then enter. Clear out the list very quick. Let me type those numbers in. 3.5, 3.2. I'm pressing enter after each one. Uh, 4.1, 4.7, 3.8. Seven point two, three point nine, 
and 38.6 okay now I'm gonna go up and double check myself 7, 2, 6.1, 5.3, 3.9, 7.2, 5.1, 3.8, 4.7, 4.1, 3.2, 3.1. Okay, it all looks right. So let me do a second mode to exit out. And now we're going to press our stat. We're going to right arrow to calc. We'll do enter on one of our stats and press enter one more time. This is going to give us a lot of useful information. So let me come over here. And um, I don't want X bar since we said population values. This would be Mu. And we've got 9.42. 9.1. 9.2. 9.3. 9.4. 9.5. 7. We also need our standard deviation, which is 7.24269979. Now I'm a down arrow, and we've got Q1, which is 4.4. We have Q2 or a median is equal to um, 8.25 and Q3 is equal to 11.95. Okay, let's see what they're wanting. Compute the Z score first, corresponding to 5.3. So we got um, 5.3 minus our mean, which was uh, 9.429 1646s and 7. Divide by our standard deviation, 7.24260979. Okay, I don't want to work that hard. That's a lot of numbers to type in. We just did one of our stats, so I'll do a beginning parentheses. And we got 55.3 minus, and this was mu, our population mean. So I'm going to go into my uh, bars, 5 for statistics, and we want our mean, which is in 2. Remember, x bar and mu are the same thing uh, formula wise. Then I do a closing parentheses divided by, and my standard deviation, which was sigma. So I go into bars again. Choose 5 for statistics, and sigma is number 4. And then I'll push enter. And our z score is negative 0 0.57. That's our first answer. Now, whenever you have more than a single number or a single variable in top or bottom of a fraction, you have to put parentheses around it. That's why I had to put parentheses around the 5.3 minus our mean. Okay, let's see what B is. B is determine the quartiles. Uh, that one's easy. Q1 is equal to 4.4. .4. Q2 
Q2 is 8.25 and Q3 is 11.95. C. Compute uh, IQR. That's Q3 minus Q1. And I don't remember where that formula was. There's the IQR there. Q3 minus Q1. Okay, so we have Q3, which is 11.95, minus Q1, which is 4.4. .4. I think that's 7.55, but let me plug in my calculator just to make sure. 11.95 minus 4.4, 7.55. Excuse me. D says determine the lower and upper fences, and then uh, are there any outliers? Well, here's how we check for outliers by using quartiles. Uh, determine Q1 and Q3, we've done that. Got an IQR, our lower fence and the upper fence. And I'll say LF for lower fence. It's formula. It says Q1 minus 1.5 times our IQR. Q1 was 4.4 um, minus 1.5 times our IQR, which is 7.55. Gives us. 1.4 minus 1.5 times 7.55. I get negative 6.925 for our lower fence. Okay. Now our upper fence. I'll say UF is equal to Q3 plus 1.5 times our IQR. It's our upper fence. And uh, why did I say up? I meant upper fence. There we go. Q3 was 11.95 plus 1.5 times IQR which was 7.55. So we've got 11.95 plus 1.5 times 7.55. And we get 23.275. Okay, those that, that's the first part. Uh, figure out our fences. Determine the lower, uh, determine the lower and upper fence. Now let's see about outliers. It says here, outliers are values less than the lower or greater than the upper. Well, uh, our lower is this, so um, there's nothing lower than that because there's no negatives. The upper is 23.27. So I look at this, 38.6 uh, is greater than that, isn't it? 38.6 30, is our outlier. And these are our fences. And those are all the different pieces they want us to find there. And I think that's the last slide. Yes, it is. So let me save this and then end the recording. And then I end the other one. Measures the position and out.